First, mute book is not a fitting. No, yeah. Comparing and contrasting, of course, and blended versus traditional delivery is not a fitting. But he was one of our first blended learning participants, so yeah. I'll share. 
And what we'll do is like how we get some of these in our cities is we like, because we're working with them, we say, oh, this one could be interesting. Do you think you might want to share? And we don't do any of these. Like these are done completely by the faculty member. Um, we will assist if they ask us to. Like I assisted in Claire's folio tech presentation because she knew nothing of the back end. So she talked about how great it was and how students loved it. And then she's like, here, control it for me so that I could control the, you know, control the back end and show how that worked. So these are some of them. So then this started to work really well. We're like, okay, it's great that we are getting these faculty to talk to each other. And now we're getting these requests of, okay, now I need to know how to do some of this stuff. And I don't want to do one-on-one because -on -one I don't want to waste your time, some of them say. Um, can you have more workshops? And then we're like, okay. I don't really want to do workshops because I don't think people are going to attend, but we'll try a different approach. So our next approach on this, and by the way, is there anybody else doing something like P2P or, yes, yes, and yes. how does it work? I'm glad we took my presentation out because it would have paralleled this in many, many, many ways. Because my first slide was workshops where an instructional technology stands in the front as a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, I, and, I had, and I had a lot of conversations with a variety of people, and that, that's echoed all through um, this room. Some, some of us have felt like an obligation to do it because there's some pressure from somewhere. But really, it boils down to a big waste of our time. I remember having that moment where I'm not doing this. This yes. is not right. And then, and then, and I had started dabbling with them, having a professor as the front lead right. on me doing a how-to at the back end mm -hmm. of it. I started that, and what would happen is their peers would come to support them. So then you got, you know, your little crowd. So I'm interested to see how you built mm -hmm. a crowd of, of um, 20. And, and and is it really 20 that many times through the term? Because, yeah. okay, all right, cool. Yeah, so. yeah it really is. It's so been really impressive what they've done with these. And, and, and I'll, I really believe it's the personal invites that have made the difference. Yeah, I'd like to hear some yeah, of those Yeah, it's personal I, invites. I give them a hard time oh. all the time because I'm like, <laughs> we, 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 we intentionally you know, pick people, but we also, like we keep track of it on the back end and we have this running sheet for every, every we keep attendance. And so we have a running sheet. Because attendance at this is actually part of SACS accreditation. For the for the IT department, yeah. So having fa you know getting fac faculty training is one of my IT department's goals for SACS accreditation for institutional effectiveness. So they keep good attendance records so that I can report those to SACS. We actually do that as well, but we don't set any kind of goals or anything. We're, we report as part of our our training and faculty engagement. Okay. Yeah, my goal is to get better. I did an arbitrary number to start off with, which was five per instructional technologist, and I asked that they make sure it's related to that person and don't invite the same five for the whole semester, you know, those kind of things. Do you have to <laughs> submit something back to faculty when they attend these kinds of events, like at the end of the year, that you know, something that happens to be strangely, coincidentally timely with annual reports or anything? Or not? No. But we could do something. Yeah, like yeah, I hadn't ever thought about it. Yeah. So yeah. when you invite them, do you have are you have access to their schedules so you know they're open mm -hmm. during plan time and stuff? Um, so so I actually put a slide in there about that. I tried, so I play, I'm the type of person that kind of plays around with things until it feels right, and then I still play with around, around with it later. So I've tried different approaches and things. And one semester I tried doing um, the calendar invites instead of just doing a general email initially. And for me, that didn't work at all. Um, even though faculty had said, oh, just invite me on the calendar and I can accept it. What I got was a lot of excess and no attendance. Mm -hmm. um, so I just didn't do that anymore. But we can do a busy search on faculty to see if they're busy. So maybe in my personal right, sometimes I'll send them, hey, you're not busy then during this time. I think it depends on how well I know that faculty member, right? All their committees and stuff. Yes, they have a ton of committees. Well, and a lot of them don't use their calendars. Right. So right. Right. But this is common hour for us. Yeah. So we do have a common hour. 
So we'll do these then, but of course everyone also schedules their committee meetings during common exactly. hours. So just because it's common hour doesn't mean they're not busy. So it's not lunch, it's just a meeting. No, it is lunch. It is lunch. Yeah, it is lunch. It's 12.30 to um, yeah. 2, two. Yeah. usually. And um, we serve sandwiches, basically. Yeah. And are they held in different places or always in the same spot? Uh, we try to stay within two same spots. <laughs> uh, one is Reeves Lodge. That's where we were doing it all the time. Now we do faculty club, too. So we go between those two because sometimes we get bumped for class. Mm -hmm. okay. Our president started this. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I mean, this is a really interesting place for us to be in. But there is no one but faculty and the president in the room. So oh. he wanted to get the conversation started. So he's inviting two faculty per session to each. He said, you're not allowed to talk for more than five minutes about what you were doing to faculty, and the rest of the time around lunch is for the conversation with everybody else. And he sold out at 24 faculty per session. He's doing several of them. Because the president's there. And he, what he wanted to do, which was interesting, is because this is his first semester in being our president, he wanted to create this whole <coughs> feeling of educational innovation, moving it forward. And so it's, it's very interesting. The conversations are happening a lot yeah. because of this. So do those professors end up going to someone to say, I want to learn, like, <laughs> From that, are they inspired, yes. and then they then they yes. uh, make an appointment? Yes, and, and so yes. he's now giving me a list of it because I was like, can I at least know who showed up? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Can you follow up with them, right? Yeah, so yeah. he's ready to follow up, but it was it's really interesting when your president or perhaps your provost just says, "Here, I want to do this." Um, boy, they were they were like chomping at the bit to present and. Well, Jonathan mentioned in his talk that we also do these scholarship lunches, inter, you know, interdisciplinary. interdisciplinary scholarship lunches, and almost no one shows up for those. Mm -hmm. yeah. The presenter is there, and if, I mean, I go to just like everyone, but there's like five people there. But it comes out of the, the dean's offices, but all they do is send out a note that says, hey, you know, this person's going to present this day and time, RSVP to me if you want lunch. And that's it. You know, you don't, nobody does any personal outreach. There's nothing else. And so you get five people to show up. But Carrie and these guys do all this personal outreach, and they get 20, 25 people. All right, so then the next thing that we've added was, so we moved into workshops because we kept getting all these requests from faculty. I want you to do workshops, but then again, my reservation was you're not going to show up. You tell me you want to do something, but you're not going to show up. So um, we've gone through a few iterations of it, and I think the attendance to those are much lower. They average about 10, but it's better than five, and it's a lot less preparation for us than what we were doing before. Um, but not to say, like, I just did one. Last week, and the room was full. There was like 25 people in that room. It so it depends on the topic, right? Um, but basically what we chose to do was to, we went through and looked at the schedule and looked at when was the least amount of classes, right? And so we picked Monday afternoons. It was between Monday afternoon and Friday afternoon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And one of the things with Friday afternoon, everybody else knows that Friday afternoon there's no class, so there's been a lot of high meeting time as well. So we chose Monday afternoon, and um, we do it from 3.30 to 5, so it's kind of later in the afternoon, and usually there's not that many classes in there. Um, and this is where we actually do workshop, right? And we try to kind of mask our workshops as um, something not like, we won't, we'll, we'll do like a Blackboard Facing workshop, but now we're going to start changing it to like building your course in Blackboard or, you know, changing the titles so they relate a little bit better. Because like this, the one I did on last week, I renamed it and reworked it because I had done it the semester before and nobody came. Pedagogical like, titles, that's what I mean. Pedagogical mm -hmm. titles, mm -hmm. not how to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once we change, you know, those little ones that are that way tend, tend to have good attendance. So like these are some of our topics. So do you go like hardcore, do you drill down the steps or do you just kind of give an overview? Depends on what we're doing. Like the grading one, we went right into the grade center, showed them how to set up assignments and, and, and get into 
grouping assignments and things like that. So we go pretty far, not completely, but. Are you usually by yourself or do you have your, your team with you? All of us are there. All so the if somebody kind of derails the whole conversation by mm -hmm. where's the, yes. where's this button? Where's the back button? Yeah. Yeah, so we do that. We, what happens is one person leads it and the rest of us are walking around um, to help. And so, um, <laughs> You'll see. I mean, you'll see what How many Blackboard Basics and Blackboard Intermediate attendance mm -hmm. compared to the other ones? Because of um, the title. Yeah, we're going to rename them. Yeah, we're going to rename them this time around. Mm -hmm. Because we, we actually had that conversation like last week. We were like, oh, we're going to rename it into almost like a designing your course or something. Some and, we're, and we're starting to see that the faculty are starting to now be ready for that. So what we're starting to see is the faculty are now actually looking at the softwares and the applications that we're using and really starting to use them. So they're changing their use. We've got a larger group of faculty now interested in technology of some sort, um, and it's helping us to now be able to change our topics and do a little bit more advanced uh, topics, I would say. But yeah, like Wiki the Blog, making students into content creators, before it used to be just called Wiki the Blog. Yeah, right. You know? So those, those things work. Integrating video into your classroom, I actually just covered Kaltura and Mediasite before we did something like Lecture Capture or Kaltura and Mediasite. You know, so how many people come in and, and or say, well, I don't know, Kaltura, well, I don't know. Well, yeah. 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 yeah, we get that all the time. They still don't know what it was. I just did the <laughs> session and I'm like, I don't, I don't know, but they know like, what it could do, right? right. And it's, it's, it's the function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this, again, Average is about 10 right now. I think it'll pick up, especially when we change our names. Um, is there anybody else doing different type of workshop series? We, we decided um, under our new leadership in the CTL to not focus so much on technology workshops. So all of our workshops last summer that we did were pedagogical. So instead of them, yeah, we gave some of the research before, but instead of, okay, research, and then here's a blog, it ended up being more that conversation I mean, we do pedagogy luncheons too that kind of hit what Pam was talking about. But, um, and it actually seems to go better. You know, I mean, we do have faculty sharing. I, I'm with Michael, I teach a class, so it has a little more merit than, you know, eight years ago when I didn't. So, with our faculty. But um, we're completely trying to move the technology out. And then our director wants us to then follow up with the people who came if they need assistance if they want to go. So. It's a different pr approach. Um, yeah, that's kind of why we, we wanted to be able to do those workshops too, mm -hmm. and that's why we have that P2P that stays completely on the faculty yeah. side, and then we have this yeah. where we can now say, oh, you've seen these cool things. We had um, last year kind of like a grassroots program come out of our faculty of these like teaching brown bags, where it wasn't you know about technology necessarily. and. You know, it had a really good turnout. I think there's a lot of excitement about it. And then this year, the faculty member just decided to not, not yeah, to take ownership. Yeah. And I don't think anyone else wanted to because they felt like it was this person's thing. And so it just, died. you know, that excitement, you know, just died. Yeah. This is a few years now. P2P's been building and it's, I've been about three years. I've been here four and you've been doing it since I've been here, so. Yeah. Just to say the consistency and time of, of the workshop, we use SharePoint and lots of people need help with it. And so we have an office hour on Thursday afternoons. And so it's gotten dialogue going. This is different, it's not pedagogical at all, but it's um, people will come and then they'll say how to use, use this. And the next thing we know, two people are sitting side by side showing them what their publishing page looks like. And um, for us, we can just constantly get this message out um, as we've been we've been doing it this semester that if you can come on Thursdays it's a workshop or it's one-on-one -on -one, it's whatever you want we have three people who show up to help and usually um, there aren't more than five people so far but we like it that way but I, my point is knowing that it's this regularly set time and if you can't make it then we'll make an appointment with you yeah but, we'll do that but um, but it's there and available for you. So file that in the back of your mind. If you can't make it this week, come next week. And so people have responded really well to that. And it's consistency for us in our schedule too, because you know I'm sure your schedule is insane certain yeah. weeks. Yeah, we have become very very busy, mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's all from this stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, 
I'm curious to like you said you've been doing it for like four years or so. Uh, the very first one or going into that, did you kind of have a goal in mind, or did you just kind of jump into it, or was there some pressure from up above? Or? No, I just I don't like doing things where nobody attends. <laughs> so, like I feel like there has to be a reward for the energy that we put into things, right? Um, so that was my goal, and so I was just looking at ways that we can make more people do this because we kind of changed our department to where we um, we were just sitting there waiting for people to come, um, and we decided to do it. Uh, re Turn it, and so we are outward facing now. So we actually are always trying to go and get clients. Now we're at a point where we can't, well, well we can, but we're pretty much at our max, so we don't do as much outreach. But these things is what keeps it moving and keeps our faculty thinking about technology, and and it helps us to kind of grow our skill sets as well, because they've come up with things that we haven't heard of, and then we get to go research them, right? So that's the fun part of our job, I would say. Did you say these invites are emails or phone calls or you show up? What, However my staff wants calls? to do it. So for me, it depends on the day and who I'm talking to and those things. So I do a set of emails usually. Um, but like for me, I send a personal note to whoever I think may be interested. And I just say to them, hey, I thought you might be interested in this one. Let me know if you can come. And sometimes it's personal. So if we have a consultation with them that week or we see them, we might do it in person mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then do you kind of, do you kind of, shoot for some kind of a commitment uh, from them so that if somebody says, oh, I can't, then you try to get your second one? No, or? I don't want to make it, because five people, inviting five people that you've actually thought about is kind of a lot of work in a way, mm -hmm. because usually I don't send the general invite until like a week before, right? And so they only have really a week to get their five invites in. Um, and I don't want this to be complete time consuming for my staff. So it's just send out the invite, get your invites out, and then if they come, they come, if they don't, it's fine. <coughs> but when you send that personal invite, they feel like obligated to respond to you, right? Yes, yes, yes or no. Um, even if you say, say, hey Julian, or hey Anna, I want you to come to this. Mm -hmm. So if they want to use you later, they usually have some type of... And even if they can't attend, they have heard from you one-on-one, -on -one, right? and remember you're there. Yeah. Like, Do you guys try to finish that off with, and if this timing isn't right, we're going to no. do something else? No. Okay, cool. No, we do, um, lately we've been trying this recording for our Monday afternoon workshop. We'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that will work, but we've recorded a few of the recent workshops. But we're going to put them up and I'll track the, the views on them. Do you think you would have had the same success if it was just you by yourself? I would have had some success, you know, because I that was five more invites. Like people, for me, when I send them an email, if I'm directing it towards them, they usually respond, right? There's few that are too busy to respond. Mm -hmm. Versus if I send out just a general email, not directing it to the person, like calling you out, they don't, most times they won't respond to that because they know it's just general ones. The reason I ask is basically it's just me, and so unlike you, I get no response. I mean, no turnover or something like that. So it's kind of discouraging. I tell them like, you're not doing some work. Like for the big upgrade, I mean, I set aside like three weeks, and each week had like a, I don't know different topics or whatever. Maybe some days I'm just like I did the 10 minute rule. Nobody shows up. Mm -hmm. Like see you later. Turn off the projector. We're gone. But I was just curious like. So I can go back to my boss and say, I need another person. I need another me, basically. Or I need two more of these. So I'm just curious about it. I remember that first day, we always ran as far as how many people we thought we had. And uh, everybody, except for a couple of people, had like two or one. And the majority of y'all had like three or so. So like numbers, is, is that the key to kind of bring some of these things? I mean, it's hard to do outreach if it's only you, right? right? Um, so I would probably take a different approach now. Outreach, I would, the PFPs would probably work better. Mm -hmm. um, and then faculty. individual, I would go out to the departments mm -hmm. and start making contacts that way. Mm -hmm. um, but you're not going to be able to take on very much mm -hmm. you know, because it's just you. But then maybe you get students or start, like we've started to pick up on uh, almost like, I don't know, what do they call it, like graduate assistants. Mm -hmm. And so we've started to use, like we have two, we have one evening person that's, that has a background in instructional technology, like graduated 
with a degree, doesn't have the experience, but has that, has at least the theory behind it. And then now we have a student worker that works with us um, three days a week. And so. You know, the other thing you might try is to reach out to librarians or something who have the relationship and ask them to send invites. Hey, Greg's doing this interesting talk on such and such, and it might relate to your class in this mm -hmm. way. We're using our chair of our IT advisory. Um, yeah, as a, as a con I, I'm, a, I'm a only also, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that has helped um, because she reports, she has a report that goes to, uh, you know, on faculty from the committee, and having that be, and they look at those reports and, and read them, and that, that's been helpful too. And she, she's also one of our early adopters, and she's in the building with early adopters, and so she spreads the word and talks with her peers um, too, which um, that's helped turn out a lot too. And I've, I've um, gotten to the point where I, you know, if we could have the, one really nice event every term, that's a good start, that's a good start. And so um, at the end of the fall, we try to do a sort of what you were talking um, about, Pam, we try to get like five faculty to do 10 minutes to, so that we have a big variety to, to, mm -hmm. that might draw you know, a nice crowd. And it, it works, it seems to work every year when they're listening to other for, for 10 minutes and they have all kind of ideas and then the time after they then they just talk and share about that and then they have the summer in front of them to either try some of the things or forget it you know so they get back in the fall and then get rejuvenated to reconnect and try it again. Well, I was thinking with uh, librarians you know yeah. I just go ahead and blur those lines you know like if you want if there's only one of you and you you'd like extra support in the room you know why not invite someone and say like hey I'm doing this workshop I could really use someone to you know like help field you know the random questions come up or the things that get me off track or, or do and the librarians hold workshops on like databases or do they, are they already do they have a workshop model already where you can partner with them somehow or uh, I don't know. it's kind of funny like our department is like we're basically housing the library. Mm -hmm. We don't have too much connection with the, with the librarians. Basically, upon mm -hmm. like, hey, hey, something's not working, and then we like, okay, we'll fix it. But there's like one actual like, uh, he's a technology liaison. So I mean, ideally, like, he would be the point of contact to kind of get me into those different channels or, or groups or settings. Yeah, I was gonna say that I charged because we're merged. So I've charged my library liaisons now would also be technology liaisons to departments. In other words, in the conversations that they're having with faculty, it isn't just about the print or whatever kind of resources they need, but to at least engage in a conversation, they may not know lots, but to bring it back. Yeah. What kind of technology are you using? What issues are coming up? What do you need? How do we do that? And we also, we do reports um, for the self-studies that academic departments go under which used to be only about library resources, and now include oh, yeah. technology resources. I've asked to have that expanded to include how are we supporting your faculty, so I really encourage that because they become merged in these departmental documents that this is a really outstanding thing for a study. But connecting more and blurring these lines, very much like Tim is saying, I think is a way to build on that relationship and start creating a team. <coughs> so that you would be far more likely for them. They'll tell you about faculty that are wanting to do something and for the two of you or more of you to be in a workshop would be great. Mm -hmm. The other thing we did, um, we have a different person that does faculty development. So they're completely, they go to report to the provost. So we've teamed up with mm -hmm. him. And we, you'll see in the next one is um, the next workshop that we did. Um, and so of course we design institute, so we teamed up with him and started building relationships there and got him involved in one of our workshop series. So this is actually the next thing that we created was the course redesign institute. Um, and uh, us and the director, what is it? I just did teaching and learning institute director, but he's got a longer name title. Mm -hmm. um, but what we saw was that faculty um, 
needed some assistance with course redesign, but it was all about, a lot of it was on pedagogy, but then what we did, we took it and, and taught some skills and things on how to integrate technology or use technology as part of that course redesign process. So we planned it together. Um, we put the money for it to, to actually like do it as an application-based institute. It's three days on the next slide. I have the kind of schedule that we run. We do it after class is over, so the faculty can tell there's no um, schedule conflict. And we chose to integrate, because when you're designing a course, you may need other resources, right? So library, community engagement, the museum, all of that. So we brought them into the mix, too. So like this is like one, it's basically one week of work in three actual meeting days where you are able to kind of redesign your course. Um, and you've got all the resources there to do so. So that's the idea, some intensive work on, your, on whatever course that you want. So when they apply, they actually have to have a course selected before they come in so we can review what they're designing. Um, and we provide food, of course. You see, everything we provide food. <laughs> But um, the way that we structured this course um, is, this is the last one. And again, we've gone through a few reiterations of it, but um, right now it's a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday that they meet. And so Monday, we talk about alignment and outcomes, right? Um, and then we go into storyboarding the course and course design. And you'll see that different people do the talks. Dave Zimmerman is, is the director of the uh, Teaching and Learning Institute. We give them assignments they actually have to complete before they come to the next day. We have them do presentations. Um, and it's a very, it's only 12 people can be in the course at the most. So it, we do it discussion based. We do it around typically a big, there's a conference room upstairs, uh, upstairs in the library that has like a, it's like a big table. And we all sit around there and talk and, and work that way. And then on Thursday, um, we move into, okay, how do you do this? How, engaging your students more about technology, using the tools of technology to do so. And then at the end of the session, we actually have individual meetings set aside uh, for the faculty to just discuss their specific syllabus at the end. And then they're done. When did you start this, Carrie? We started this two years ago, and we, go ahead, no, it's full every time, I guess. This has really helped um, us change the way faculty look at IT, at the instructional technologists. Um, you know, our, we, had a, we had our CTL director, he wasn't doing anything like this. Um, and so we actually went to him and said, we, we need to be doing something like this. And, and, and as ridiculous as this sounds, we had to talk him into it, mm -hmm. right? Um, and his, if you really go through here, his commitment to this is not very large. Uh, his personal time commitment to this is not very large. And it's really IT, it's really this, the academic computing group that commits to this and does it. We actually have a hard time getting our writing center people and our community engagement people and all those other people to show up for this, right? It's like, what are you doing? This is a chance for you to put yourself in front of 12 faculty and you're not gonna be there in the room and really integrate into this? But we are lucky if they appear for their discussion for that hour and 15 minutes rather than being there for all three days so that they could really integrate with the faculty. But now, when faculty really want to talk about pedagogy, it's these guys that they're thinking are their pedagogical peers, right? And that has taken us from the people who know how to push the buttons to the people I'm going to partner with to improve my teaching. Um, and maybe we just got lucky that the rest of our peers around here are not as committed to that as we are, but, but it has changed the way the faculty view us. And our P2P attendance has gone up, our Monday afternoon workshop attendance has gone up, 
Our FIDI grant proposals have gone up. Everything we do has gone up since we started doing this. I saw there was financial supplement for this. What is that specifically? Seven fifty. And they don't get the last piece until they turn in their syllabus. So, <laughs> so they get the first part. We've, yeah, we've, we with works with things where they like we have the blended learning certification process. They don't get they don't get their money for that until they finish doing whatever they're supposed to do. The FIDI grant they only get part of it up front, and then once they do their presentation, that's when they get the rest of it. And so we've changed to that model because we used to just give them the money up front. They no, never see them yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> never see the final product. Yeah. So. Anybody else have some other institutes or things that they're doing? Is that, I guess traditionally when your classes are already ended, when these are May. offered. Yeah. yeah, so we were going to do like May and in January, mm -hmm. like right before they started. And we did one in January, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a little bit difficult mm -hmm. because we're all just coming back and, and it's it was too hard to get it coordinated and organized. So we just do the May one now. Talk about maybe even doing one in August. Yeah. But like last year, we had all these blended certs, and then we had the Gen Ed was doing a um, workshop as well, so it was hard. Uh, can I ask an administrative question? Yeah. So, so you don't pay all the stipend until the end. Our, our payroll cycle is monthly. Does, and so in effect, how do you guys do it? Is it monthly on your yeah, it's monthly, so, yeah. so they get it. They don't get it until they turn everything in, though. That's, right. They don't the get it until they turn everything in. Right. We don't process that last payment until they turn everything in, and then my budget person processes that, hands it to me. I sign off on it. It goes to HR, and then it gets into whatever the next paycheck is. All right. I'm not trying to get in the weeds, but. So do you do like a third and then two thirds when you finish, or 50-50 so that you do? 50 what do you do? 50 for this one, uh -huh. uh, actually for most of them it's two thirds and one third. So it's just okay. a small portion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, Carrie, did you say you, you wait for them to turn in a syllabus at the end of this? What did you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the syllabus, their completed syllabus, because this is a course redesign. Mm -hmm. so. All right, and then that brings us to our FIDI grant. So, um, FIDI grant has been around for a very long time for us. But before it was, anybody that submitted something pretty much got approved. Um, it went through our professional standards committee. They said, okay, you just about to everything. Um, and then when Pat got here, we tried to redesign it, right? So we, we weren't really happy anyway with the results because we weren't seeing much progress, right? We, they would get this money and then we didn't see what they really did with it. They didn't come to us with this for assistance. We didn't help take them through the process. We were giving them gifts of money. <laughs> so, uh, Pat doesn't like to give away money. So, <laughs> like, we had something with it. But, um, no we well. took a look at it, <laughs> and the first time we tried to redesign it, we actually tried to redesign it for that blended thing, and if you remember, Pat talked about how it all blew up. That year, we didn't give out grants because we redesigned it for blended, and the faculty had a problem, and so we said, okay, we're not giving any money this year. <laughs> but it gave us the opportunity then to completely redesign the actual grant itself, and the requirement of change requirements of the grant. So we changed the requirements so that they get a team that they have to work with. The grant actually has to um, be used in their teaching, because some of them weren't even using it in their teaching, has to be used in their teaching the next academic year. So it's in a course somewhere. Um, and then they we held back a portion of the funds until they did their final uh, presentation in a CSP format. So. So basically, the twenty they get a twenty five hundred dollar salary stipend, and then there's up to twenty five hundred dollars that they could do something else with. If they wanted to go to training, uh, if they needed a piece of software, that sort of thing. We do not allow them to use it for hardware because uh, faculty get too much in the. I bought that camera with my FIDI grant, so it's mine. No, it's just not yours, right? <laughs> so if they, if 
if hardware is going to be required to accomplish what they want to do, I want to buy that hardware and it become available to the college mm -hmm. to use that hardware, not you thinking it's yours. So we've done, we've had a few, actually I think I have the last few on here. So these are the last few years of grants that we've had and they're kind of their titles. Um, and you see, they're kind of getting more, more difficult as they go. Um, like we had one this year where we had a whole deal with apps and iPads and trying to figure out how this faculty member is going to teach Chinese, the Chinese characters training one. Um, and so we ended up buying actually a set of iPads that are checked out of the library that, but because we felt that they would need them for the class, but we also wanted them to be used for the campus. So that was that. Um, you guys have any questions about any of those ones? You see the ePortfolio is one was the 2 one where we decided on Folio Tech. The five days in ancient Rome was very interesting. They used um, the Google SketchUp and posted it mm -hmm. on a blog and had some interesting designs that they did. But the idea here is that we give them money to research and learn a technology that they wouldn't either have the time to do so otherwise, right? Because faculty, this is a good way to supplement some income here, the $2,500. All right, so some of the things that's worked for us, does not work for us, are up here. Um, things to explain. The focus and sense of workshops versus the generic workshops. They, the generic workshops where you have all this stuff that you're showcasing, it doesn't really, it, it doesn't do much for for attendance purposes. Um, follow up on discussions. So what we'll do is when we have these faculty in these sessions, we hear something or if they show interest in something, we'll follow up. Or because we're attending, we started attending all the faculty functions and being there as a kind of peer, it's helped them to look at us differently, which you guys know, I've heard that multiple times in the sessions, um, but even in those faculty functions, we have all these random discussions, right? And the key is to follow up on it, which is pretty much common. Um, things that haven't worked for us is those general workshops, that that missing tie to the pedagogy, even though we know it ties, they don't, you know, we have to say it in the actual title. Um, and then I put avoiding all faculty meetings and avoiding all faculty meetings it works and doesn't work, right? <laughs> So when we do our scheduling, like for our P2P, we actually go in and we look at all the faculty meetings that are scheduled um, and try to fit ours in in between, mm -hmm. okay? So that works in theory, but faculty change their meetings. Um, they have all these other meetings that aren't on the books, of course, but I think it helps to at least initially schedule it, not when there's an all faculty meeting, right? Or, so, so that, that's what our goal is there. Um, but it's very hard because we have a common hour and everybody uses the common hour on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we've talked about maybe moving it to Fridays or something like that. Um, but just kind of what we found. And then the general unfocused email cold calls, like just calling people up and asking them, what do you want to learn about? You know, might as well just not bother. So, for us. Our, our model is more of that does not count. Honestly, and we don't offer food. Best case scenario, we get some candy and a cup of coffee. And so we have the low attendance model. I don't know that it's not like Can we take up a collection so they can do muffins? <laughs> so bring your own muffin wire. <laughs> taking it to the help desk every time afterwards. So I don't know how much they're really using the food there. For the lunches and stuff, they have to because they have no time in between classes. But well, they don't have to because you brown bag, I guess. But. Carrie, when you say faculty meetings, you're talking about like departmental meetings or committee mm -hmm. meetings, oh, things like that. that. <laughs> or, or like, for example, our all faculty meeting, you have to be invited. If you're not faculty, you have to be invited. Uh, see, um, no, that's not, like, it's, 
the all faculty meeting, the department meetings, um, and it goes through, I, it's Anna's task, to go through and try to figure out a time that works. And that's right? through your master calendar to see. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. yeah. and it's hard. Um, and again, it changes after we do our schedule. Like we've got the schedule already set. I know the faculty meetings are gonna change <coughs> based on somebody, you know, some conflict along the way. And there may be an extra one called. But so we just kind of have to watch that. Um, so some of the things we're thinking about for the future, I want to see what you guys are thinking about, is, so I've gotten, we've got these evening faculty, right? So, and their classes either start at 4.45 or at 6.30. And so I was thinking, and we've gotten these requests recently, that maybe we could do something like a digital dinner series similar to our P2Ps. And so like give some choices and like fluctuate that. So, thinking we may try that, I'm not sure yet. Um, because the 3.30 evening one, people can't attend um, if they do a 4.45 class. And then the ones that are teaching day faculty, they usually finish around five, so they might be able to do something at five. So I think we might be able to reach some people that we're not reaching now on the five o'clock shift. Um, the ACS blended certification we've talked about. One of the things we're wanting to do is go into department meetings um, for the, the academic department meetings and just um, get us on the calendar for like five minutes. We, we do that. Yeah. Some say no thank you. Some yeah. Some welcome us. I think we're, we'll be welcome now, I think before. Because mm -hmm. I tried a little bit before, like before we got all this going on and it wasn't as successful. What would be your agenda for the your department? Mm -hmm. Depends on which department we're going into. So um, I think we would adjust it. Like if we went into, I guess, would be a good example, foreign languages, we'll probably talk a little bit about some of the um, folio tech stuff that's going on. If we went into biology or the sciences, we probably would keep it more on something with some of the new features of Blackboard or things like that. So you, would, you would pick a single particular topic for your five minutes, not a of, by the way, blah, 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 blah. We would highlight a topic, but I think we might give them also, this is what, what we do. Uh -huh. You know, there are some other things that we do, but we would highlight one thing. Well, and I wanted to, the list is put together, but the emails have not gone out because we've <laughs> been swamped. There would have been no way to go to these faculty meetings, but I wanted to reach out to, um, so our student assistant put a list together with contact points for all departments. I wanted to reach out to departments and ask, hey, what is something you would like to do? What is something you are doing that is not working? And then come in with something that might plug in there. There's some things that could work for departments, but so that we could further tailor. <coughs> I mean, I've, I've generally found that a large percentage don't know what they right. would like to do. Mm -hmm. They're, yeah, right. You have your early adopters who know the things they want. And if try. they don't, yeah. Yeah, but we know enough of, we, we, we can have, give them some options. Yeah, we have different yes. faculty that we know in different mm -hmm. departments so we can, you know, kind of probe them a little bit. The other thing that came up actually out of this thing was the, the distance faculty, the faculty workshops. It interests me a little bit. Um, we talked about maybe bringing in expertise in that we don't have here to, to hold something that would be interactive with our faculty. And I think that, that might be something that we can try in the future that would work almost like in a lunch setting or something like that. But <coughs> what are some other ideas that you guys think might work? For the evening piece at a previous institution, we had like with it was high tech happy hour. Ah. So um, <laughs> and we actually did have a bar with wine and beer and what I would have said heavy hors d'oeuvres. Okay. And so we had a number of faculty. I, we sort of treated it like a curated museum exhibit. So it was okay. here P2P and that we would have two or three faculty who were sort of stationed here who could talk to everybody mm -hmm. about what they were doing. And there was no other program, but it was faculty wandering around and engaging you with a conversation and you're showing, yes, this is the problem I was solving. Those were hugely popular mm -hmm. because it didn't commit you to staying for any huge mm -hmm. length of time that people could come in and wander out and they thought it was just you know, thrilling to be able to sit there and have a glass of wine and, and talk with each other. How um, often did you do this? Did this once a month. Once a month. Um, um, and it was 
it was hugely effective. I could see that because most of my faculty want to meet with me for beer <laughs> or whatever right after work. <laughs> yeah, and it, I mean, it was just, you know, nobody's, nobody was over drinking. I mean, all the kind of worries that you might have, we didn't have that. But it just, they seemed to be very comfortable because, and they weren't sitting down, so it wasn't like I don't, really don't want to be here and now I can't get out of this. Yeah. So that was one of the nice things. <laughs> did, it, did it lead to people um, seeking out an instructional Technology. Yeah, because all of us were wandering around and listening and having conversations, and then we knew who was there, we get the list, and we could follow up and turn around and say, do you want to know any more? And so it was just sort of, it was like that, but pretty casual. Okay. What did you call them? Uh, High tech happy hour. <laughs> Some other things. What do you guys think about the faculty exchange almost like you might be able to do it within our institutions or yeah, I feel like we're right there with Furman. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean this is so terrific. Right. Um, but I need to go back to the first slide and start there. Yeah. Well that's so, I mean there's like this very, choice. I'm very impressed mm -hmm. with what you guys have been able to do. I know we're trying to perhaps we're looking at our advisory boards looking into maybe like a two-day conference type workshop where other faculty present for a little bit mm -hmm. and then there might be one technology component, but it's really, as instead of the library and CTL and our faculty, we do a research, like how do you do research? And then, oh, instead of just traditional paper using technology, so we do that. So we're looking at blending that along with some of the other technology and pedagogy. Um, and we're trying to figure out is May or August the best time of doing that. And I think we're going to try something like that in August now. Mm -hmm. So instead of workshops throughout the summer or things like that. So one of the, um, I think when we first did the the uh, this workshop, the CRI workshop, we did one in August, was it August and May? I think mm -hmm. was the first two that we did, and we had them sign up in the spring semester. Yeah. So we got all the applications in. And we those two sections and they were about the same I mean we, we, they were both cool but we have also like community engagement in the Cash Institute they do a day of faculty what is it called uh, you, you know what I'm talking about where they have all these different faculty talk well actually they stopped doing that but they were doing they 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 did for a while a, a um, sort of a day of faculty scholarship they called it but they would would ask the faculty to sign up to talk about things and and it has died people s kind of stopped going and um but it, i think it was because the programming was bad the first programming, programming was, was bad was actually pretty well attended but then the, the next time around it dropped and then it, like that that second time the, the program was really bad because there was actually attendance in all the different rooms yeah um but that, so they have they they didn't do it this past year, and they're talking about reinstituting it. They sort of since it had gotten so bad and poorly attended, they let it die for a year, and and I think they're going to try to re-energize it and see what they can do with it, you know. But but quite honestly, you know, these are people who don't do this for a living, and we've gotten to the point where we do this for a living, <laughs> you know. And we know how to do this now, but they're back at the first slide again because they don't do this for a living. And until they really get serious about it, it's not really going to take off. It takes focused effort like, to do these things. You have to put somebody on all the time, otherwise it can die easily. Mm -hmm. Quick you know, by the way. Again, there are four, four of you, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me ask you advice. I mean, I, I could not, I'm not qualified to teach that course redesign. So how can I get there? I mean, how did you guys learn or was this? Well, I have uh, of two of my instructional technologists are actually trained in course design. Um, in college you did that? Yeah. Uh, I, my master's program is part of that, but also I worked at UCF, and that was the bulk of what we did, was teaching people how to design what they did for online courses. And for me, I don't have a background in course design. I'm actually, um, uh, I have an MBA. So, um, and, and so one teaching, of course, but also researching the theory. I mean, it's all out there to research and, and practice. And then 
gleaming from our Kajit to director. So you know, you know more than you think you do. Yeah, yeah. I think so. You know, don't 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 think you don't know enough because it's just getting out there and doing it. And the faculty don't. Um, they don't put it into a philosophical or structural framework, what they do. You know, Anna was originally a faculty member and came to the first course redesign. And I remember a conversation we had where she said, you know, I've been doing these things forever. I never knew there was a name for them. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. You know? wonder, would you guys ever allow someone like me to attend? One of we your could. sessions? Come on. Yeah. Because yeah. really, that would be, that would be a fantastic oh, wow. yeah. oh, Come well, on. Outsiders. <laughs> Anytime. I'm not sure if the elf in, should, if there is an elf in the room, but with regard to course design, um, at least what we say at Parchment quite often is faculty have an issue when our educational colleagues, uh, people from the education department, mm -hmm. are interested in, in helping the faculty as a whole with regard to curricular opportunities. Um, and, 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 and in some cases, there, there isn't, uh, there, there's a little bit of conflict there. And, and definitely, uh, those who are not in education as a formal background, um, with years of experience teaching their discipline, are going to be, to some degree, experts in their teaching, yet, have opportunities that they could be learning some things for education, but they don't necessarily get that. Mm -hmm. and, and and for us, when we have instructional technologists with a formal background in education, masters, instructional design, in, uh, instructional technology, they sometimes come in with a little bit more of a barrier when they're starting out with faculty as they're developing relationships. So I'm not sure if it's all that. You know. It sounds like your grants are a very big incentive in the stipends, and I'm not sure we have anything that really like that's very, that's a big, yeah. but we were doing those all along and they weren't generating any traffic uh -huh. at all, uh -huh. like none. Yeah, so. Carrie, go back to the CRI um, listing of what is actually done. Would I get a stipend if I can? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe this is an ACS opportunity. Right. Because the, it crossed my mind, yeah. the two, three day thing, mm -hmm. that there's probably a way to tweak that just a little bit with what you all do to have us be a be right. the be the participants yes. in it. Oh, where you're blended. You, you guys are just sort of tweaking it for us because we're not going to actually probably take and redesign a course, but right. um, and then and then we give back some from mm -hmm. what we've seen and mm -hmm. we've done so that so that it is not just. You know, it's always, well, why don't you do it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that there's some sort of a give back. Maybe that's an opportunity. Well, I think there's also, a, a group. I think yeah. there's also a model there in place with that, the ACS teaching workshop that faculty mm -hmm. attend. Right. Yeah. You know, so it, it seems to make total sense to have something near that for instructional technologists. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at these topics, the very first one, course alignment and learning objectives, that's our CTL director. So, that's, a, that's one of the few places where any sort of real um, educational whatever is actually sort of given. Look, at this is what a syllabus is, and this is what a learning objective is, and you should do X, Y, Z, right? After that, it really breaks much more into let's talk about things, right? And there's a tremendous amount of discussion that goes on in these things. And the 12 faculty, the, the evaluations of these things are that the faculty have learned as much from each other as they did from anybody else. Mm -hmm. And after we did the first one, the, the reviews were, you know, you should actually make us do stuff. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. Faculty actually said, you should actually <laughs> give us homework assignments and make us do stuff. And that's where the homework assignments came into play because they, they felt that they had to be driven to do it. Um, and they learn it, and, and they all say they learn a tremendous amount from each other. So I don't think there is, number one, I don't think you have to, to, to know everything to be able to facilitate this. And number two, I don't think you have to make it overly educational 
You know, you don't have to throw the pedagogical terms at them. You have to let them talk about the kinds of things that they that they do and get them. And the other thing that they say is they're all amazed because after they have redone this one course, they're all like, you know, I should do this for all my courses. Ah, oh, oh, amazing, right? And also, a lot of this content we're kind of reusing in the blended certification, right? So the blended certification is all about the your course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we just go into more detail. And we have six weeks of workshop. Exactly. Have you guys done yeah. any tracking on student outcomes prior to working on these versus after so that you then can say? Research. No, the, the whole school is doing something um, they, with, with looking at the student outcomes on the blended side of things, but nothing. Yeah, good idea. The problem, the, the, the reality of that is that we put out the call and the faculty submit their application, right? And they're going to do it in the summer and they're going to redesign. They're redesigning a course they're going to teach, say, in the fall. So we would have to make them wait a year to be able to do any sort of, okay, well, first let's study your current fall class that you're not teaching as well as you would like. And let's get those results and then we'll put you through this. You know, that too much of a lag for them to stay interested. Unless he just turned around and said, at least you were looking qualitatively to say that if they're applying to do this and what they want to do, because here's the problem they're trying to address. Yes. Right. So if they're doing that and then you're asking them, it doesn't have to be a formal right. assessment evaluation process. Right. Well, yeah, to say like the what other. It. Right. Did it, in their own opinion, did it address the problems that they went in here to do this mm -hmm. and what else would go through would be great. Yeah. I think one thing might be interesting is, I mean, we already used to do evaluations. We could potentially look at the ones before and after, yeah. right? Just look at the ones that are already done. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. Slide. But, but the answer to Jan's question is, if, if you all would like us to put one of these on for you, we would be happy to do that. Well, on that. It's that or the interesting other thing I thought when you're talking about the teaching workshop that comes through ACS. Yeah. Yeah. So what if a track of the teaching workshop happened to involve they're, they're faculty oh, that want to redo their oh, courses and, and the instructional technologists from across the ACS are also involved in that workshop to help these faculty, whether it's at your institution or not. And happily enough, this is a conversation I'm hoping to have with Barbara Lum in about a week. So yeah. it's definitely something we can, yeah.